fire up the church, son. Come on. <laughs> He's sick. And it's tummy. Yeah. Oh. We got tummy aches. Take some roll leaves. You'll be able to.
feel like it. The little black train? <laughs> yeah. Yes, please. It's okay. If you don't feel like it, it's okay. Uh, don't, don't give her away. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You got a little black girl, too. You can give her a little black girl. Oh, you got a little black girl. Oh, I like that. That's. Uh-uh. You know what it is? Every time I think about Jesus, I feel good. 
Be in trouble with that one. Thank you. 
things and uh, me, my daddy wasn't really all that close but me and my grandpa and, and all was and my uncle Amen. but uh, you know I hit thinking about it a lot uh, me and my grandpa Ford never got to play together he played music and all but uh, 37 years ago today we buried him and uh, I was 7 year old so I never got to play music with him but well, the years of the set tape and I got me and grandpa playing together but that never really happened but this is one of his most notable songs what a fellowship
Not much. Not much? No, sir. Well, today's a good day to start. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up. Come on up here. Don't be bashful. Here he comes. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. He said, if you believe that this is real, so go over to our church and pray about it. So Monday night, we took him home. The rest of the crew come over here and prayed about it. It seemed like we was here maybe 10 minutes. But when I checked my clock, we was here over 30 minutes praying about this situation. It got better uh, Tuesday morning. Now, I mean, it still ain't perfect, but, you know, we've had a decent week out of that. So prayer works, prayer does things. Amen. Who in here all has a father? Oh. Well, all out of heaven has a father. Amen. Right. We all got two fathers. Amen. One earthly and one heavenly. My earthly father, he ain't doing too good. But my heavenly father, he never changed. Mm-hmm. Signing up to be today in the crowd. That's right. What's your name, young man? Dylan Schultz. Dylan Schultz. Yes, sir. Mr. Schultz, please. Get your wife back here, young man. Beyonce. Beyonce. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. She ain't gonna hit the same. You don't say? No. Uh oh. I'm trying to do his daddy to come to you.
Some of you, some of you are older, but we always say back in the day, but the life was hard. It was really hard. And uh, I had siblings that I took care of. I had my kids young, which God sent me to save my life. I know, I know for a fact. Amen. And all this time, I always knew in the back of my head that God was real. I never doubted God, <clears throat> but I wasn't His. So life progressed. I came to Spartanburg in 81. My life changed. I met a good man. We married. As the young people say, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Life goes on. But I really don't know exactly what year it was. I know um, it's probably 10 or 12 years ago that I went and I was going to this church uh, periodically and I had good friends there, really good friends. People were good. It was uh, Church of God of Prophecy. And so one Wednesday night I went in there and I maybe already told this story, but I'm gonna tell it again. Because this is actually where my life changed. Because I'd gotten saved. And as I've said before, I went down every mountain in uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, I even got tumbled on the beach in the war, and that didn't help. So I went there Wednesday night, and I did not want to go to prayer meeting. I just told my friend, I said, I'm, I'm just going to stay and play on the computer. In a dark church room, hall, whatever you want to call it, I met God there that night. Amen. In the dark. With a preacher I've known and I liked, but I it honestly clicked in my head that I may not have a father on earth, but it finally clicked that I have a father in heaven. Amen. And so my life just changed periodically. I mean, just it you know it it wasn't instant. If you're looking for instant like instant potatoes, it's not here, but it'll be progressive. And um, I guess he changes some people's life in an instant, which is great. But I just thank the Lord for what he's done for me today. I thank, the, I thank him for the fathers that I see out here. And I've watched for the fathers. I've always watched them. Always loved how they, you know, played with their children or whatever. Just, just it's always been a yearning down in me. And it's hard to grow up without a father, but it is more tragic 
to be without our Heavenly Father. Amen. And I pray that there is something, because there ain't no good in me. I mean, if I were to tell you things that's been happened in my life, you probably wouldn't even speak to me anymore. Because we're human. And human humans don't look at it like God. God gave his son for us. Amen. For me. He waited on me. He didn't give up on me. And it would have been I didn't give up. Yeah. And I have given up. So I'm telling all you people in here, everybody I love in this church, newcomers, old people, it don't matter. Amen. I mean old old older people that's been coming, not age wise. <laughs> I was not the best person that I could be for my children when they were coming up to me. But God was right there to help me through it. Amen. And I don't want to, I'm not giving up. Amen. I am not. Amen. And you said your dad's not doing good. Well, he will be doing good. He will be, yeah. Because he's going to heaven. Right. Amen. And um, I just, my sister and her girls went to see uh, their aunt that's got dementia and she's really sick, not sick. I mean, she's she's hanging in there. But so many people have that dementia. Yep. And I don't know when I read this, but there was a couple that had just got married and they were hit by a drunk driver and both of them killed. And don't you know, or you, I'm going to tell you, this is not permanent what we are seeing here. No, it ain't. And I have my hope higher. Mm -hmm. And I'm not that. gonna give it up. So mm -hmm. that there's something good somebody sees in me, it's not me. It's Jesus Christ. And Amen. I thank y'all for listening to me. If the Bible says if we got hope in Jesus Christ in this life only, we are what? Men most miserable. Amen. All men most miserable. We can't have hope in this life. This it says in what is that Romans? Hope that is seen is not hope. What a man says, why well, do it yet hope for? But the hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. I got hope that I can't see. I got faith that I can't see. And we're going to be reading in Ephesians chapter 6. <coughs> just for a few moments. I know this is Father's Day. It's good to see you, sir. What's this lady's name? Kennedy. Kennedy? Yes, sir. Well, praise the Lord. I still have to remember that. President Kennedy. <laughs> Dillon. Marshall Dillon. Go to the world. Uh -oh. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6. I got a heavenly father and an earthly father. My earthly father is just about ready to leave this world to go meet our heavenly father. Yeah. Do you know that my Heavenly Father and my daddy's Heavenly Father are the same thing. Yep. And the God we serve in the day is the same God that Moses served. Right. Same one that spoke it all into existence. Well, I believe in evolution. I believe we all come from monkeys. Well, you might have. I don't know. I didn't. I've seen some people look like it, did you? <laughs> okay. I could tell you what Leon Horton said for the what mm -hmm. happened, but uh, it's not polite to speak, so I just keep my mind shut. <laughs> He's been dead for a long time. Praise God, I believe he got his life straightened out. He was one rough old character. Last time I seen him, when I saw him leave, I said, Leon Horton, I love you. And I seen tears roll down his eyes. First time I ever seen that old man cry. He couldn't speak. Faye Walker, anybody ever in here know, ever know Faye Walker? Said I laid him to the Lord before he died. Amen. You knew Leon Hort, didn't you, Travis? No, mm -hmm. but I knew Clay Walker. Yeah, Leon Hort, he was rough, he was rough character. His wife was rough. Her name was Joyce Hort. And she was a rough old gal too. That was a 16-year-old boy. They run a store right here in Chesney off the Ferris Ridge River. They was a 16-year-old boy. Coming out cussing him and raising the cane, cussing her, and she beat the soup out of him and <laughs> threw him out the door. <laughs> she was a rough old gal. He thought he was going to push that woman around, he didn't. I mean, she hit him with her fist just like a grown man, knocked him back the cold away. I bet he she didn't come back talking gal. to her like that again. Huh? I bet he didn't come back again. <laughs> she 
She's not a North Carolina mountain girl. I don't know where you found her at. I tried to steal her good side. I know that. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I'm saved today. Amen. If you're not saved, you're in a good place to get there. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Does anybody know a bad place to get saved? No. Does anybody know a place where you can't get saved? Be careful. Oh. Hell. Right. <laughs> Cannot get out of hell. You can't get saved once you wind up there. There you go. That's the only place. Anybody walking and breathing, there's fire game. For the Lord Jesus Christ to rescue out of the, the death, death, deadness of sin. We're going to go to the, prayer, the Lord in prayer. Remember all the requests. Remember the folks Travis worked with. He said it got better. They spent about 30 minutes up here talking. You know, it always works better when you talk to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I get up. Most times we get up. Me and Marion get down and pray every morning. But sometimes I don't. When I don't, it seems like the day just don't want to go with me. Amen. When I do pray, though, the other thing might blow up. I still rejoice because I got to talk to the Lord that morning. Amen. Amen. It ain't near it at all. I don't care what blows up. When I talk to the Lord, it always seems like it, it ain't near as bad as it could have been. Amen. I'm glad to be one of God's children. I'm just one of his children. <coughs> home sick for heaven. One that is longing for his return again. The rest of that song is I'll never be satisfied until I see Jesus. <coughs> Good song. Anybody else got a testimony heart? Maybe we won't be here too long today. I know it's Father's Day. We won't, we won't have evening service. But honor your father and your mother. Dear Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we bow before thy holy presence this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. I still, my knees still bend. Lord, I hope they continue to be in honor of the Lord Jesus Christ because thou art worthy. Lord, I don't know how long it's going to be before this old body gets to where I can't bow my knees and get on them before you, but I hope I, I hope I draw the last breath before that day comes. Because it's not my privilege, Lord, and it's my privilege and it's a gift that I can bow before a holy God. Lord, it's not a shame and I'm not embarrassed to bow before thee any word at any time, Lord, to call upon the name of my Lord and Savior. Lord, when we think of where we came from and where you brought us to, Lord, and how much you have protected us and forgiven us and washed us and cleansed us, and, and Lord, you've helped our infirmities and our sicknesses, Lord, you have forgiven us of our sin. Lord, you have set our feet upon a rock that is not that will never crack and it will never crumble. Lord, you have established our goings. <laughs> Lord, you put a prayer on our lips and a song in our hearts. Lord, thou art everything this day. The word, your word tells us, Lord, you tell us in thy word, I am Alpha and I am Omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. I am the thirst. I am the last. I am he that was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of hell and of death. Lord, thou art everything. Lord, we look and we see things going on in the land today that breaks our heart, makes us mad, disgust, makes us sick on our stomach, oh Lord God. And by and, and we have partaken in most of it, Lord, but by thy grace and by thy mercy, when judgment, when I was judged and found guilty, and I throwed myself upon the court of the Lord God Almighty, the great judge. Mercy prevailed. Oh, Lord, you frighten us against me. Oh, Lord, I love to read your word. Lord Jesus Christ, it blesses my heart. Lord, I thank you. When you pull back the curtain and let us see just a little bit deeper. Lord, it don't make no difference if we can quote every word in this book. If we don't believe it and live by it, we're just speaking words into the air. Lord, bless every soul that is here. All the requests of prayer, we lift these up to you. Lord, we've got a lot of physical requests of the sick, the suffering, ones whose kidneys and minds confused, Lord, ones with dementia, 
Lord, Alzheimer's, all these diseases and sicknesses and infirmities that comes upon these old physical bodies, Lord. And Lord, you know that we have need to get help. But Lord, the spiritual side of life, the one that's going to last through eternity, Lord, we don't hear many people say, pray asking for prayer for this, Lord. Help me get, pray that I get closer unto God. Pray that I do something to lead some soul to the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for me that I can do something to lift up the name of my Jesus, Lord. Everybody's got a lot of physical, but not much spiritual side of the prayer life, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we will uh, take a hold of the spiritual and turn loose of the physical, that we will come to realize that Jesus Christ is more precious. Lord, you are more precious than anything that we have in this physical, this carnal. Lord, that we can touch, and we can hear, and we can smell, or we can taste. Lord God, all the pleasure and all the fun, all the sin and all the wickedness has been put under the blood of Jesus Christ. If confession is made, admit that I'm lost or I'm sin sick, Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ is cleansing. Lord, and there's not anything that's, that your blood or thy forgiveness cannot forgive of. Bless the bread that fixed to be broken for thy glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, with love and pray, Lord, you see what's here. Do what you see fit, Lord. Ain't nothing. But, Lord Jesus Christ, when you get a hold of it, it turns into something good. And in thy name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Good to see Mr. Dean and Buffy back. They had a vacation last week. We missed them, but good to see y'all back. Good to be back. Praise the Lord. The Pangan, William climbed all the steps. Mr. Greg, he wasn't feeling good last night. He's feeling a little bit better today, I hope. I am. Much better. Much better. Are you going back and getting anything done to the doctor? Yeah, I got to go back for two tests first of next month. Are you going to fail or are you going to pass? <laughs> I hope I pass. I hope you pass. They find out what's wrong with you. Yeah. I hope he finds out something that he can do to help you with, Mr. Green. Good to see y'all this morning. If he don't, he, uh, he, I got a way to go. Yep. I'll go to heaven to be with Jesus. That's as far as I'm going. Yep. I've got a way to go. But you know, today might be the day. If you're not ready to meet Jesus today, that's a dangerous life. Amen. Amen. That's a dangerous way to be. Where is the on, the on the right and left side of Jesus Christ? Where is the sheep? The right. On the right side. Who wants to be on the left? I don't. The goats over there. Ephesians chapter six. Verse 1, it says, Children, mm -hmm. obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Mm -hmm. Verse 2 says, Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment, the promise. What was the promise? Y'all remember the commandment, Honor thy father and thy mother? What was the rest of it? That thy days will be long on this earth. May be long on earth. Amen. That was the first commandment of the promise. Honor your father and your mother that thy days may be long. You know, in the Old Testament, if a son, if a child was rebellious, they was to bring them before the council or the elders of the of the children of Israel, of the temple, and if they found it to be so, you know what they was to do with them? Take them out and stone them. Stone them to death. If they had a rebellious child, they had the right to go out there and kill a graveyard dead. Now, if that was going on today, they wouldn't leave any of us left. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't what you shaking your head for. You wouldn't have made it? No, I wouldn't have made it. <laughs> Me neither, son. First commandment with promise that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. That's the entire commandment. Mm -hmm. Verse 4 says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, 
But listen to this second. Both to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Verse 4 is what I was settled on this morning. And ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath. But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. There ain't many words in that verse right there, but have you ever stopped to think about what that means? Don't bring, don't provoke your children to wrath. Don't do something. Now, we see fathers all across the land today that how do you provoke a child to wrath? Anybody have any answers for that? How do you provoke a child to wrath? Amen? Don't provoke your child, children to Father, provoke not your children to wrath. Amen? Tempting or testing or uh, leading them in the wrong direction. Now, I know the young ones that gets mad at their parents, but provoke not your children to wrath. What kind of wrath are we talking about, folks? Anybody have that? I'm not talking about young ones being provoked to wrath. Provoke not your children to wrath. Provoke means to poke and gather. Is that not what that means? To, to lead them in the wrong direction. Amen? That provokes children to wrath. What kind of wrath? Provoke not your children to the wrath of God. Amen? Don't lead them down the wrong road. Let's go. All of us is going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ one of these days. Amen? And you know what? I don't want our young ones to say, well, Mom and Daddy never told me that. They're always out trying to help me learn how to do something stupid or trying to teach me how to smoke dope or get drunk. Or My daddy, he was always running around with some other woman. He did provoking your children. You know what? Our young ones is going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ the same as we are. And you know, uh, I don't want... We, how would you like your young ones to stand before the Lord God and you standing right there with them well, my mom and daddy never, my daddy never did teach me this. All I see to do was out here raising hell and accustomed and having a good time in the earth. You provoke your children to wrath and hell, but guess what the judgment is if they don't get saved before? Guess what your children, where are your children, where are our children going to wind up, bless God, if they don't get their lives straightened out and, keep, and forget about all this wrath that they got in the, inside of the day? Well, they're going to wind up. Say it again, Jamie. They're going to wind up in hell. Wind up in hell. Amen. Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture. Nurture. You know what? How do you, how do you, uh, Lord, thank you, but how do you take care of a newborn baby? Give it milk. Nurture. Mama nurtures that baby. Amen. Though something most mamas do anyway. Most mamas nurture their children and, they, and, they, and they'll feed them and they'll take care of them and they'll wash them. They'll change their diaper, bless God, and they'll ooh and ah, and they'll talk some of the goofiest sounding talk you ever talk to. You, you see a, 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 a newborn baby and everybody they get around ooh, 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 do, 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 You know what? Hey, can't nobody understand what there is. Even that young one can't. I bet that younger, what are you talking about? What are you saying, you gorehead? I can't understand that vile language. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. How many of us has ever talked to a little baby in some kind of goofy voice? I want to see some. Don't sit there and be shy. <laughs> Travis, you did it too. You didn't raise your hand. You see a little baby, you talk to it strange to I never was around babies much. <laughs> Talk strange anyway. <laughs> 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 Listen, folks. You nurture. You know, bring them up in the nurture of the Lord. Nurture means but you're, hey, hey, I, I don't know. I don't want to see any. I've read the Old Testament multiple times. And you know one of the commandments of that the God has given the fathers over the Old Testament. You teach them the laws of the Lord God. You write them on the doorpost in your house and upon the lintels, and you put them, let them hang between your eyes, wire for bracelets. You teach your young ones about the laws and the commandments and the statutes and, and, and the ways of God. You teach your young ones this. Amen. That's bringing them up in the nurture of the Lord God. What is now? I'm like, what are they teaching them today? <laughs> Anything but that. <laughs> That's strange. Ask, ask. You know what? 
back in the Old Testament, fathers was responsible for the family. Amen. Has anything changed? No. Say it again. It's not supposed to be changed. No. What is a father's post that says, provoke not, don't provoke your children, out, bring them up in a nurture of God, teach them about God, and admonition of the Lord. Teach them now. How many fathers that you can think of has led the life in front of their wife and their children, bless God, the world when their youngins gets grown, but I'm going to be like my daddy. Hmm. Is that a good thing at times or a bad time? Thing? I'm going to live like my daddy, but he did it. He got away with it. And he seemed to do all right. Thank you for the water. Provoke not your children to wrath, bring them up to nurture and admonition of the Lord. That one verse has got a lot in it. You go to think about it, don't it? Teach them about the Lord God. How can you teach a child about the Lord Jesus Christ when you don't have time to go out to the church house and listen? All right, where are you going to find any nurture and admonition of the Lord in this old world? You can't find it out here in this world. Well, let me put that. It's out there if you look for it. But how many fathers out there looking for something to teach their youngins when they get back to the house about the Lord Jesus Christ? Most of them, come on, uh, they get on up at the drink and they, come on, son, let me go buy you a beer. Amen? I seen this commercial years ago and the little old young boy, he's 12, 13, 14, he's in there, and he's in there rolling them a joint. <laughs> and he's smoking, smoking, smoking both. And his daddy walked in on him as he was rolling his cigarette. And his daddy got all flabbergasted. He was highly upset. Just about ready to beat the soup out. Who taught you how to do this? You did, daddy. I might have been watching you. Was that the nurture and admonition of the Lord? No. No. Who taught you how to drink? I've been watching you, Daddy. Who taught you how to cuss? I've been listening to you, Daddy. Who taught you how to run around with women? I've been watching you, Daddy. Daddy's listening, folks. We are going to give account to the Lord God for how we raised our young Amen. Amen. We are going to give account for how we treated our wives. Fathers, you think it's life? He think it's a light thing that God made you a man? No! You have that on purpose to represent God and to lead your family and tie your best. You're out to a best to get him into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen! I'll say it. Amen. Lord help me. You know when the spirit goes to moving. The words slow down. I talked to a young man. He came here for a while. I wouldn't call his name, but some of you might know him. Been a couple of years back. And he was in here. I talked to him about an hour. I said, young man, you are the man. Amen. You are the man of the house. And listen, ladies, I'm not putting y'all down, but the man of the house has got the last say so. That's just the way it is. That's the way God designed it. That's the way it's supposed to be. And if the man makes the wrong decision, what's he got to do with it? And He's got to live with it. Mm -hmm. Amen. If he makes the wrong decision, that's his decision. God put him in that position to make the decision how to raise his family what to buy, what not to buy, where to go, where not to go. The man has that, he has that responsibility laid on his shoulders. And if he makes a wrong one, but God, he's got to live with it. Now, if his wife makes a wrong decision, who's responsible for that? He is. Say it again, Jamie. He is. He is still responsible for it. Amen. That ain't too hard to live with, is it? But 
How can I be responsible for my wife's wrong decision? Because you are to lead them and protect them and honor them and take care of them and do anything you can to straighten out any man that comes to cross. Amen. That's the man's responsibility. It ain't too it's pretty pretty doggone difficult to be a man. No wonder they so many queers, amen. No wonder they so many trying to become women. Lord God, have mercy on these bunch of heathens out here. I was, oh, Lord, I'm going to have to tell this. I? I was, who, who in here likes to watch that movie Blue Bloods? I believe I told this last week. Anybody ever seen Blue Bloods? I love to watch it. I, you know what? Now they got Chicago police and the fire department. All of them jumped in on, on the bandwagon when the Blue Bloods is good, did But I was trying to watch that a couple of weeks ago, and Marianne had a big old pot of spaghetti. I love spaghetti. <laughs> I love her. She makes the best spaghetti in the world. And I was sitting out eating about a half. I got me a, over a half a gallon. Folks, I love spaghetti. <laughs> I ate not eat about a quart of it. And I was sitting there, and a commercial came. I was sitting there watching Blue Bloods. McDonald's come on. I said, I don't want no McDonald's. I got spaghetti. Amen. And a, another commercial came on talking about HIV. HIV commercial. Talking about the vaccines and the medicine they got. And that's fine. But you know what? I sat there and I seen a man laying in another one's lap. I don't. And he had his arm while I caressed him. And I seen another man reach and both of them had a beard and one kissed. And they kissed one another on this. And he, folks, I just about lost my spaghetti. <laughs> it made me sick in my stomach. And I, I, you know what? I ain't watched Blue Blood since. Because them sorry commercials. You know what? You know what them are trying? And you know what? The government has gave them permission to adopt children. And to raise them up, you know, is that the 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 nurture and admonition of the Lord? No, no, that's the nurture and admonition of the pit of hell. Amen. Trying to raise them young and well, they'll think it's all right for a man and a man. You know what the Bible says in Leviticus? It is an abomination for a man to lie with another man as he does a woman, and they should. You know what the Bible says? They shouldn't be taken out of gun, stoned to death. Yep. That's in the Old Testament, and it's also in Romans if you don't believe it. Amen. Amen. Is that the nurture and admonition of the Lord? No. That's coming out of the pit of hell route right from Satan, right up into the human race, and they're trying to teach others that it's all right. Wrong! It's not right. Yep. You fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up <clears throat> in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You know, when Amber, before Amber was born, I had this big old plan how I was going to raise her. <laughs> and I was in the operating room when Amber was born. And Marianne had a, she had to have a C-section. I was watch. I was there when they cut her open and took Amber out. You know what? That didn't make me sick to my stomach, but that commercial did. Amen. And you know, Amber came out, and you know what? My plans changed. <laughs> All them big old plans that I had how I was going to raise my daughter, they changed when I heard her scream. Wow! Put me back, put me back, put me back. <laughs> she didn't say that. And I tell you what, Mary Ann, she, she was shaking that bad. She was that nervous. I mean, she was, her whole body was shaking like that. Until Amber, until she heard the cry, yeah. she calmed down. Tears rolled out her eyes, and she quit shaking. She heard the voice of her child. Amen. Amen. I tried to raise. We tried to raise our daughter to be a godly girl, young lady. And I tried. Let me tell you something, folks. I didn't raise my son to be a be a sissy. Amen. Amen. I whooped him. I made him get up at four o'clock in the morning, get out there and help me get up cedar wood. I made him bust cedar wood. I made him plow the garden. I made him dirt a hoe. I made him cut grass, bless God. And he's become a pretty good man, bless God. He ain't afraid to get dirty. He ain't afraid to work, bless God. And he's gonna treat his wife the way I hope, I hope that I told him to. Amen. I raised him to be a man. Not no some sissy out here where he's afraid to get his hands dirty, amen. Where he's afraid to go get a hot sweat. <coughs> you know what I performed that marriage ceremony? I said, son, you treat that woman as you would treat the most precious thing in this world. And don't you be afraid to do anything for her. Amen. If she wants it, bless God, and you can afford it, go get it. If you can't afford it, tell her I'm sorry, honey. We'll have to get something else. Don't you never do mistreat her. 
And by all means, first thing, number one, top of the list, top number one, always ask God and put him first. Amen. And Amen. you'll be the center of your life. Amen. Amen. How do you think me and Marion made it the last 33, how, how many, 33 years? <laughs> She's a godly woman, and I hope and bless God that I've tried to be a godly man and a godly father. And you know what's kept us together? The unity of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's Amen. what's kept us together. Amen. It ain't nothing she's done or I've done, but Jesus Christ is the center of her life, and he's the center of my life. And bless God, I, that's a good thing to look. You know, when he hung on that cross, you know when he's hanging on that cross? He had heaven in his hand and, and, and the human race in his hand. Amen. And Jesus Christ is a mediator and he brought the union together. Amen. Glory to God, I'm glad I'm saved. God and the man could not be except Jesus Christ hanging, uh, hanging above the ground had a hold of God in his hand and had a hold of the human race. And he is the union between God and the human race. Amen. Christ, the mediator. He is the union between a husband and wife. If God is in the, the marriage, bless God, Satan himself can't do a thing about it, but he'll try. Mm -hmm. But if you put Christ first and the nurture and the admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ, oh, Lord, that's good in there. Talking about the wives also. Praise God. Nurture and admonition of the Lord. If Jesus Christ is first, everything else falls into place. Amen? Everything else goes into place. As long as Christ is first, or number one, or the alpha, or the first, the beginning, as long as he's that, the omega, the last and the ending will all come into place. Amen? Amen. You may go to Warren Hearts. Also, I'm going to say that there's a lot more in here. <coughs> a lot more in that one verse. Nurture and admonition of the Lord. Look, look husbands. Look, daddies. Bless God. He's put that responsibility on you to raise our families and to be an inspiration or, let me put it like this, an example but between for the wife and the children, bless God. Look, don't take it lightly, bless God. Uh, he made you a man. How about trying to be one of them? <laughs> Amen. Who in here is sure that they're a man? If you ain't come up here, I'll, 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 I got a quick test to find out. Amen. <laughs> Crocodile Dundee. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Are oh, you sure you're a man? Well, act like one then. Look at you. Stand up, Tanny. Uh oh. I'm you care if I do this. Okay. This I can tell from looking here at right? he's a strong, he's a man. Do like this, Tanny. If, if you look at his hands and his arms, he's used them arms and hands. Look at his hand, let's go where he's mechanic. Thank you, sir. Where he's mechanic uh, rough, hard. Now he's had a hard life. Most of it's his fault, but listen, Jesus Christ has saved him, and he's married that woman right there, and from what I get, bless God, he's an outstanding husband. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God, amen. He's become the man of God, bless God, that God intended him to be. Amen, Timmy. Thank you, sir. You think he takes it lightly? I think if I could ever get him wound up to give his testimony, bless God, you'd hear some things but that the Lord brought him through. Amen. Praise God. And that's why prayer is so important. Amen. Prayer. Many prayers went up. Yep. Many. Many prayers. Ms. Hammond. God is faithful. We just Praise have to what, just just believe in him. And Amen. He's going to do it. It's not in our time, but it's his. Thank God good. God is good all the time. Nurture and admonition of the Lord. I ain't bragging on him. I'm bragging on what God's done. Amen. I ain't gonna brag on none of it because Satan tempts you and tests you enough, and and he tries to lure you. But I can see what God's how God's working in your life. Praise God. 
and I see what he has done. And you know, humanly, it's impossible. If you read Hebrews chapter 6, <coughs> it, it destroys all hope just about it. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4. It says, it, For it is impossible to renew those again who were once enlightened and yeah. have been saved, who has tasted of the heavenly calling and have been partakers of the good word of God, if they shall fall, fall away. Yeah. To renew them again. Amen. If somebody turns their back on the Lord Jesus Christ that's been saved by grace, bless God, and they wander back out in this old world, the Bible says it is impossible to renew them again unto salvation. That's what the Bible says. It is impossible for you and me. But what's impossible for God? Nothing. Say it again. Nothing. Not a thing. God don't make no difference how far they drift off back out of the door. God still got his hand right there. And if they repent, he'll catch them again. Amen. Amen. Ain't that good? Oh, yes. God's not going to leave us without a witness. He's not going to leave us without his word. He's not going to leave us without an example. Bless you. I've got old men of God that I've known now through the years. I still hear them. I still see them. I still see them. I still see their tears and their sweat. And I still hear their voices crying in their head. I wish I could I wish I could recorded all this that I've heard this God. I would like to have it published throughout the world where they could hurt these old men of God fire from the pulpit and not worry about somebody's feelings, trying to get them saved by grace. Amen. If you get mad as hell at me, bless God, I don't care as long as you get saved. Continue to act like it. Amen. When you shake somebody's hand, don't feel like a limber dish rag. Put some grip on it. Amen. <laughs> when you greet somebody, don't sit there on your lazy carpet. Stand up and say hello. Amen. See these young ones today. An elderly person walk in and step to be a one. A feet set in their carpets in one seat and their feet propped up on another and won't even pay no attention. You know what? It's a good idea to take your leg and kick them feet. Where about you got that wet on the Get your feet out of that feet or get up and give that air to the front of your feet, you work it, young bum. That's just the way it is. Yep, that's right. That's all right, son. Leave him down there, dude. He, let him come. Turn him loose. Let him come up here. He ain't gonna bother me. Come here, son. Oh. Here, <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, come on up here, all you there, man. Uh, uh, Father. Thank you. 
Thank you for letting me have the privilege to preach here. Y'all can run me off any time you want to, but you ain't here. Yeah. 